Hello everyone, we are going to solve problem 15 of chapter 18. The pendulum consists of a 10 kilogram uniform disc and a 3 kilogram uniform slender rod. If it is released from rest in the position shown, determine its angular velocity when it rotates clockwise 90 degrees. So we have the initial angular velocity. It starts from rest. That means that the initial angular velocity is zero, and we wanna find the final angular velocity. So that's the classical work and energy problem because we wanted the final angular velocity at a second position. If it was about a second time frame, then impulse momentum would have been a better approach. But here, this is the first instance that is horizontal and at the Final instance, this one becomes completely vertical. So if you write our kinetic energy work equation, the initial kinetic energy is zero. You need to find a work that is done on the sample and final kinetic energy. So for final kinetic energy, we have multiple options. We can write it about the center of gravity of each rigid body and include the velocity of the center of gravity in our kinetic energy equation, or we could write our moment of inertia about point A, which is a fixed point. Therefore, we do not need to include the linear velocity components of each uh, rigid body. So the second approach would be easier. So I'm gonna write half of IA omega squared. And IA is the overall moment of inertia of my system, both for a disk and rod. So my first task is to find IA, the moment of inertia of the system about A. If I can find I disk, but I know I disk about this center of gravity. So I need to use parallel axis theorem to move this to point A. I call that distance D1. So that would be the distance from center of gravity to point A, D1, which is the whole length of the rod plus the radius. Also, I need to add the moment of inertia of the rod. Also, I know it about the center, so I need to move it using parallel axis theorem and that's the mass of the rod. And the second distance would be from this center to here. Call this D2. So writing IA, the mass of this would be M D R squared, mass of the disk D1, I rod would be one twelve M R length plus M of rod and D the distance is half of the length so D squared would be L squared over four. So if I want to combine these two for the whole thing, I can write one third of MR L squared. So the moment of inertia of the rod about one of its end would be one third. About its center would be one twelve. So you could directly write it this way if, if you knew it, depending on what, what we have. So I'm gonna expand this and find IA. Would be half of the mass of the disk is 10. The radius is 0.4. I just need to use uh, parallel axis theorem 10, 2.4. That would be a distance C1. So that's just the first component. And also I have a second component, which would be one third of the mass, which is three of the length would be two squared. And at the end, I find IA, 
the mass moment of inertia would be 62.4 kilogram meter square. So for my equation, I found Ia, omega, the second component of omega or the omega at final position is unknown. That would be unknown. The next thing that I need to find is the work that is done on the sample. So the work that is done on the sample is the work of the weight. The center of gravity is moved from here to here. So that would be the distance that is moved for the rod and from here all the way to here and that's the distance that is moved for the disc. And in both cases it's positive. The direction of the force and the direction of displacement are the same. So I have positive work on, done on the sample. The work done on the rod I showed by UR would be mg h r v3 9.81 the whole length of the rod is two so half of that would be one so i get 29.43 joule is the unit in si for work and the work done on the disc similar mg h of the disc is of this is for rod this is for disc the mass is 10, 9.81. The distance is the length plus the radius, so 2.4, 235.44 joule. And now I can put everything together. So T1 plus U12 equals T2. T1 was zero. Now I need to add the work and all the work would be uh, positive. So I have another work that I need to include is the work of the moment in addition to the work of the weight. So the work of the moment would be the moment times the angle. Theta. Theta is 90 degrees or in radians is pi over 2. So if I write um, the magnitude of the moment is 30. The angle is pi over 2, so I get 47.12 newton meter or joule. So you want to, I just need to add all the components that I found here 29, 235.44, and 47.12. All of them are positive. So if I add them together, it would be 47.12 plus 29.43, oh, let me, and uh, 235.44, I get T2, which is half I, I found I to be 62.4 omega squared. So omega is the only unknown, I found omega to be 3.6 radian per second. So solving this problem, when we found the moment of inertia about point A, it helped us significantly because the only component of uh, kinetic energy that we had was the rotation. And the rotation of the two objects are the same. The rotation of the disc and the rod are the same. They are attached together. So we can write the total system is half Ia omega squared. You could split it, this kinetic energy, and write the kinetic energy for the rod, kinetic energy for the disc. But it's simpler to... Uh, put both of them together in, in one. And when it comes to work, we had three components of the work. We had the work done by the, the weights and also the work of the moment. All of them are positive because the direction of movement and also the direction of the force are, are the same. And remember that for rigid body, we are interested in the center of gravity. So I looked at how far the center of gravity is moving. That was my HA and that was my HB.